Inside Mercer Basketball with Coach Bob Hoffman and your host, Rick Cameron. Brought to you by Wild Wing Cafe. Tonight, Associate Head Coach Doug Eslick, it seems as if one of those storms by name, has kidnapped our head coach somewhere, weather conditions uh, prevented him from being here. Coach E, glad to have you with us this evening. Thank you for having me, Rick. I'm excited to be here. All right, kind of set the stage, Coach E. You've been with us several years now and uh, as a bear and leading the bears along with Coach Hop and the rest of the staff. Kind of give us a brief background how you ended up in Macon, Georgia. Well, this is, uh, I guess, my fifth year here uh, in Macon, Rick. So. Uh, it seems like just yesterday that, that uh, my wife and I moved down here, but, um, but this is year five. We had a great run, uh, had an incredible group of guys we've gotten to coach during my time here. Uh, before I came to Mercer, I was an assistant at Gardner-Webb University up in North yep. Carolina. Yep. Uh, I was at UNC Greensboro before that. Uh, so this will be my uh, 11th year in uh, Division One coaching. Seems only appropriate, Coach, uh, with the experience back to UNCG. That was one of our two opponents last week. But let's uh, quickly go over the two games. We had two games at home. Obviously, this late in the year, boy, conference games are tough. Uh, night in and night out, whether they're at home or on the road. But let's start first with the Western Carolina. One of those nights where, you know, when all else, uh, you work a great game plan, but you still need shots to fall. You know, we, we just couldn't buy a bucket, Rick. You know, we were getting great shots. Our guys were being unselfish, creating for each other. Uh, we, were, we were executing well. We were getting the shots we wanted. Uh, we just couldn't buy one. Uh, it was a really tough night for our guys. I thought we really competed, really hung in there. Uh, the end of the game, we had a second unit in there that gave yeah. us such a huge lift yeah. uh, defensively and, and really made it a game right down to the wire. Uh, that was uh, that was great to see those guys come in and really give our team a boost. And it was a night when, when Western was finding its three-point shots. Yeah, they were, uh, you know, we were missing, uh, you know, everything we looked at, and they were hitting everything. And uh, unfortunately, they were shooting mostly threes. Uh, you know, Mike Brown got really hot and was yeah. shooting the ball really four well. Four for four. He did. He shot the ball great, especially in the second half. Um, they've got a bunch of really, really talented scores on the perimeter, and those guys can get hot on any given night. Let's talk a, a little bit more, Doug, about the young guys that went into the game. I know Coach likes to exchange offense for defense late in the contest, but not only did those guys go in and get some stops, they were producing points as well. They sure did. Uh, got a steal. Uh, Justin Lewis got to the line, got some free throws. Uh, Jordan Strawberry with that tough and one. Uh, those, guys were, those guys were great. Uh, they were playing with a ton of energy. They were so excited to be on the board and to be able to contribute. Uh, and, and Western really didn't know what to do with them there in the last couple of minutes. Okay, we got uh, on to Saturday, Coach. We had another great crowd on Thursday night. The sellouts just continue. I know it's gotta be a great thrill for this coaching staff and players to see the house just packed out. It's awesome. You know, uh, Hawkins Arena is the best atmosphere in the Southern Conference, hands down, uh, because of our fans, night in and night out. Uh, our cheerleaders, our band, the atmosphere that the administration creates there is, is second to none in the Southern Conference. It's been a blast. We'll bring UNCG in. Second time we played those guys. Had a lead in the second half, but uh, boy, you knew the run was coming. Just had to sustain the run. They're so talented. Uh, they're such a talented group. Uh, I was actually went to school with uh, with Wes Miller. Uh, he's a great coach, yeah. really sharp young young coach, and um, and he was going to have. They're fighting for their lives, uh, and they're doing a great job here coming down the stretch. And they've been in so many close games, uh, and it's just a matter of time until they they break open. We were fortunate that it wasn't against us the other night. Yeah. All right, coach. Now we've talked about the hardcore stuff from last week. A new survey comes out today. Coach Hoffman continues to get accolades across the country. The t survey today, coaches in the top 10 again, and it's? One of the actually top five, he was number four in the country, sexiest mid-major coaches in America. Sexiest mid-major guys, you hear this, Coach Hoffman has made the uh, sexiest fourth on the list among mid-major coaches. Tell us more, Coach. You know, it, it's so humbling to work for a guy who has such an, a, a national following like Coach Hoffman. And apparently the, the ladies have spoken across the country, Rick. I mean, number four in the entire country. <laughs> number four. All right, uh, Coach, now on a serious level, Coach Hoffman, if you got any other stories you might can share, what it's like behind the scenes working with Bob Hoffman day in, day out. You know, my, uh, my favorite story about Coach Hoffman that I have uh, told every recruit that we've ever signed at Mercer, my first recruiting trip with him, we stopped at a great steakhouse uh, late one night as we were driving through Charlotte, North Carolina. 
uh, and we were the only people in there, fortunately. Yep. And uh, he orders this huge steak, so did I. We we're both so happy just hammering these steaks. And uh, I look up from mine as I'm finishing up, and he's got the bone of the T-bone in his hands uh, in this nice steakhouse just going to town <laughs> uh, as if he were sitting at home at his kitchen table. Wow. And uh, that was my first overnight recruiting trip with Coach Hoffman. And, uh, and, and needless to say, that broke the ice a little bit, and it's been, uh, it's been great ever since. Certainly, if you travel with a Bob Hoffman team or even on a recruiting visit, you're going to eat. You're going to eat, and you're going to eat well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Coach E, uh, quickly, looking back, last week's Sonic Player of the Week, who would you say? Uh, Jabri Bryant. Uh, Jabri he Bryant. Was, he was a consistent uh, offensive threat for us. Uh, really did a nice job creating for himself, creating for others. Uh, he has been a defensive rock for us. He's been guarding the opponent's best player uh, night in and night out. He's gotten him in foul trouble sometimes yep. because people are going at him so hard. But, uh, you know, we would not be where we are in this season without his leadership, without yep. his steadiness on both sides of the ball. And he's been a tremendous rebounder from the guard spot yep. as well, which is something we desperately need. Uh, and so he was yet again uh, the most consistent guy. Uh, this past week. So he well deserves this award. All right, Coach, before I let you go, one final question. What do you enjoy most about coaching? Uh, I think the, the thing I enjoy the most is just getting to work with our guys every single day uh, and being able to, to speak into their lives about things other than basketball uh, and then being able to work with them on the court on their games and then watching that translate into success for them on the court. There's nothing that I enjoy more than uh, working with a kid on something, whether it's a, sh it's a shot or a dribble move or a post move, and then have them do it in a game and have some success. Uh, there's nothing more amazing than that as a coach. All right, Coach, you're a great addition to the staff. We enjoy working with you very much. Glad you're at Mercer. Now we've got some work to do the next two weeks. Thank you, Rick. That's Coach Doug Eslick. We'll be back uh, in just a moment. We're going to campus and talk with Jordan Strawberry when we return on Inside Mercer Basketball. the game plan rush into the wild wing cafe and tackle one of our new steakhouse burgers 100 percent angus 100 percent great it's an all-star lineup that can win you tickets to the biggest games of the year where well we're back in the mercer team room once again a chance to meet one of our mercer players today it's jordan strawberry our freshman guard from santa Ana, california jordan uh, glad to have you aboard we've enjoyed seeing you play already mm -hmm. first question our mercer fans might want to ask how did you end up to mercer from santa Ana, california um well i got a call from uh, coach nelp one day and we just kind of started talking and he was telling me about the school and then uh, I started to like them and they really started to talk to me. So then I came down here to visit and then after my visit it was just where I wanted to be so it felt great to be here. How has that been to go to the next level? Um, it's been a, a pretty big transition. It's a bit, bit different, you know, the three-point line's a little bit different. It's a little further, but I think I've done a good job of transitioning well. But I mean, it's been a tough transition at the beginning, but I've just been trying to grind it out and be the best I could be. Of course, point guard's a very difficult position mm -hmm. to play, and I know one game early on, I think Seton Hall, Phillip Leonard fouled out, so mm -hmm. boy, you had the weight of the game on your shoulder, mm -hmm. so you haven't been thrown into the fire, but you have gained some valuable experience mm -hmm. already. Uh, yeah, I definitely have, and I think that uh, all the off-season workouts and all that stuff has prepared me for those situations of being thrown in to uh, tough situations, so I mean, even in high school, I've had situations like that, so that all prepared me for it, so I think I've done a very well job. All right, at this point in your career, mm -hmm. if you will, tell us the part of your game that you feel is the strongest, and mm -hmm. maybe the part that you're still working on. Uh, I think the part of my game is the strongest is probably getting to the basket and finding others. Strawberry, and look at that! Uh, I mean, I think uh, I've been working on my jump shot, you know, uh, trying to get it consistent, because th there's times that I'm not consistent with it, so that's probably one of my weakest uh, things as being consistent from the outside. I'm sure you get asked this question a million times, but for our Mercer mm -hmm. fans, what's it like being the son of Daryl Strawberry, who we think is one of the greatest baseball players <laughs> ever? Um, it's pretty cool, and it's also, you know, something that I, that I look at as I want to, the why I want to succeed is because I don't want to just be known as his son. I want to be known as me. So it's pretty cool, though. 
you know, being his son, a lot of people know him, and so then I get a lot of exposure, people know me, so it's pretty cool. And you also have a brother, so he still yeah. plays professional ball as well. Yes, I do. He plays overseas in uh, uh, Greece right now. I understand. He, mm -hmm, he was drafted into the NBA at first. All right, well, mm -hmm. let's talk about uh, outside of basketball on the court. Mm -hmm. We talked about the transition of the game itself, but what about the, the travel? We've already been to Anchorage, Alaska, mm -hmm. and some got some upcoming trips. How is that going, the adjusting and becoming a teammate to these guys that you're mm -hmm. learning to know them personally, yeah. as well as a teammate? Um, the travel is a little different, you know, because like in high school, we traveled, but it wasn't like you're always traveling. You are in co college. Traveling in college, you travel pretty much every day, every week, almost every week. To a different to a different city and different state so i mean it's a little different we haven't gotten the conference play yet so we i'll find out what that's like and being a teammate is it's uh you're a lot closer than you were with your high school teammates you're like because you're with these guys every day you guys you're always with these guys so i think i've done a good job of becoming a great teammate with them and being real close to my teammates and i really like my teammates so i'll do whatever i can for them Obviously, you do spend a lot of time with your teammates, pretty much your family away from home mm -hmm. right now, but uh, what do you enjoy doing when you're not practicing or playing the game of basketball? Um, kind of hanging out with them, playing uh, video games together, uh, going to movies and stuff like that. Just kind of hanging out with my teammates. You know, we always have a good time when we're together, so that's kind of like what things we like to do. All right, obviously you've got a lot of basketball yet to play here at mm -hmm. Mercer University, but also getting a great degree as well as mm -hmm. far as from the education and the academic standpoint. Mm -hmm. What would you hope to do one day? It looks like you were majoring in business. Yes. Is that still correct? Yes. What so do you hope to do one day? Um, I hope to own my own business with me and my sisters. We hope to own a, our own business together as a, as a trio. So... Um, that's probably our, my game plan for the uh, education-wise. All right, from a young stand, younger standpoint, I'm sure you had aspirations to, as you say, to play uh, mm -hmm. on your own one day. What mm -hmm. about other young children who may be looking at Jordan Strawberry, a freshman, and playing so much D1 basketball? What advice would you give younger kids about preparing themselves for playing at this level? Uh, I think you just have to work hard, you know. It's not like a thing that you can do every now and then. You gotta do it every day if you wanna be where I'm at or where others are at to get to the next level, you wanna you have to do it every day. You can't just slack off on same some days wanna do it and some days don't wanna do it. So that's one thing I've definitely learned that I've always they have to come every day to prepare to work. So can you sense and do you see in practice every day the games we played thus far, this team getting better and better and how good can it be? by the time we go into conference play. Yeah, I definitely sense that we've gotten a lot better and uh, we've, from day one, we've really tried to uh, get together and work together. So I think we've really adjusted into the new concepts that Coach Hoffman has and we've really uh, done a good job of that and we're, I think we're coming together uh, great. So I think conference play will be ready for every conference game, so I'm excited for that. All right, that's Jordan Strawberry, our freshman point guard. We'll be back with more when we return Inside Mercer Basketball. For over 20 years, Mercer has relied on Forsyth Street Orthopedics. Their team of physicians keeps players on the court. Forsyth Street Orthopedics and Ortho Georgia have merged together into one practice, and we're stronger than ever with 26 physicians and five regional offices. As a graduate of Mercer and a partner of Ortho Georgia, we are proud to sponsor and take care of Mercer athletes. Ortho Georgia, getting better together. Go Bears! Back at Wild Wing Cafe, you know, com comedians are in the house in abundance this evening. Of course, anytime Kevin Canavari's in the house, it tends to be that way. Speaking of Kevin Canavari, last year, the most, uh, the winningest senior class ever in the history of Mercer athletics accomplished quite a lot of feats. Gentleman sitting next to me was a member of that, Anthony White Jr. Thanks for being with us this evening. Thank you for having me. Anthony, I, there are memories that we have from last year. Everybody remembers the Duke game. The one thing I remember and always will is Bud Thomas launching a chest pass that you caught in mid-stride. The minute you hit that layup, I could say, we're going to do this. Yeah. Tell us about the feeling. Uh, well, the way the play went, me and Bud in practice, we did that a lot. and. Uh, I remember we did it my, our junior year against ETSU, and the way it was, he was denying me, and me and Bud just looked at each other, and I took off, and he threw a great pass. Um, 
But after, yeah, after that, that's like, I feel like everybody, after I made the layup, you can just feel. You knew it was going to yeah, happen. You, you can feel everything change. Walk us through following the Duke win, Anthony. How did your life change? Oh, that's a good question. See, well, I got, you know, everybody, the social media and all that. So I got to my phone, and I had probably like 500 text messages, 600 tweets and things like that. But, I mean, when I came home, there's a lot of people who um, – Maybe maybe weren't rooting for us. Yeah. Or maybe just didn't like Duke. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they all, they, everybody reached out and showed their support. All right. Since then, Anthony, uh, you've uh, had a hand at uh, professional ball. Tell us uh, where your paths have taken you since then, and what what are you doing now? Okay. Well, um, two months after I graduated, I got a call from a team in Australia, and their player had got one of the imports they had had gotten hurt, and they wanted me to come take a spot. So they called me on a Sunday. And by Wednesday, I had to fly out. Wow. And the night I landed, I had to play. Really? So, um, but you did well that night, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Well, I did all right. Okay. I was tired. Okay. <laughs> I was very tired. But um, did, I played pretty well down there. Uh, we lost in the Eastern Conference Finals. Um, and then when I came back, I wanted to go play in Europe. But the European season had already started, so I missed the transition to go play there. Yep. And uh, so now I'm pretty much just training and working out, uh, doing little jobs on the side. And, preparing for the summer. All right, so definitely more professional basketball uh, in the uh, picture for Anthony White Jr. God willing. God All right, Anthony, talk to us about uh, you guys accomplished so much. It wasn't just the Duke win. It wasn't just last year. Three years, going back before the CIT, the NIT, the NCAA. Tell us now, looking back, what was the key to the success of this class that accomplished all of that? Um, I would say persistence. Um, there's, there's things that we weren't very good at, and then when we got to practice, there was, we always had, there was always a certain plan, something that we had our mind set on that we had to fix. Yeah. So it, whether it was playing all 40 minutes or whether it's like getting the plays down, running with the right uh, momentum, and uh, I think really, and the thing that really helped us was all the seniors. Um, having all the seniors and the leadership on that team yeah. was a really big deal. So. For these guys uh, in the house this evening who are, are now following in your footsteps and want to keep this winning championship tradition, what would be your advice or is your advice to these guys to going on to a SOCON championship and also one day advancing to the NCAA tournament? Um, all I would really say is just play hard the whole time you're in the game. I mean, that's really all you can do. If you play hard and do what uh, Hoffman and all the other coaches tell you to do, I mean, there's not much wrong things that they're going to tell you. Yeah. So if you do it their way and do it to your best of abilities, then you're going to win. Obviously, uh, Anthony, you guys accomplished so much on the court, but uh, what else did it do to develop you as a person playing basketball and, and being a student and a graduate of Mercer University? Uh, that's a good question. Um, well, I think I think one big thing, like I said, was the leadership yep. and being able to communication was really big because Hoffman's a real stickler for that. So um, I think really communication and being able to talk out, like public speaking, something like this is really something s simple. Uh, that's really really good. Well, I know when you guys got here, there were a lot of people in the area, maybe the southeast that knew about Mercer when you guys got done, the bar had been raised. When these guys take to the road now and put Mercer on their chest, a lot more people are aware of Mercer University with what you guys accomplished. Uh, do you stay in touch with the guys? I know Kevin's in the house, Course was here last well, I week. Yeah, I talked you still to everybody. You guys are pretty much uh, like this the rest of the, your time. life, yeah. huh? Yes, we are. I mean, we have no choice. We did something really huge and it's only right. I mean, we're like a family, so you always got to keep up with family. All right, final question real quick. The SB, which was uh, supposed to be for the biggest upset. I still think it's the biggest win of the year, but tell us what it was like for you personally to win the SB. Um, first, I was mad because I was in Australia. I couldn't go to that. That's the first thing. Okay. But, but to win it, um, that's the one thing I said after the game was like, it's only upset if you don't believe. So I agree with what you said, but it was the biggest win. But to win it, it's just another accomplishment to add on to the season that we had last year. All right, Anthony White Jr., you guys accomplished so much. Uh, the rest of you are bound to do other things. Kevin is with us the rest of our lives, I think, and we're very thankful for that. <laughs> yeah. All right, to Anthony White Jr., our guest this evening, thanks for being with us. Daniel Corsi last week, you this week. Uh, maybe we can get Bud Thomas or Monty Brown or somebody to join us next week. Hopefully. 
Anthony White Jr. We're going to take a break, and come back, and coach, talk with Coach Spencer Wright and look ahead to two huge games coming up, Chattanooga and Sanford. We'll be back with more Inside Mercer Basketball. As a business owner, you need to choose the financial direction that's best for you to find a clear path to growth and success. At bb and we support businesses of all sizes with personal service and advice, sharing the sound financial knowledge we've gained over more than 140 years so you can move ahead with confidence. Talk to us today about your business goals. bb and sharing knowledge for a brighter direction. Hey, all you Bear fans, I know we're having a great time at this game. It's exciting, fun. We're getting after it. If you want to have a good time after this game, you need to go over to Margarita's Mercer Village. They have amazing Mexican food, and they're going to take care of you. All kinds of specials. You can find what you want. Look at my body. It's working good for me. Come on over and check them out at Mercer Village Margarita's. Back at Wild Wing Cafe, shops at River Crossing, we're talking inside Mercer basketball. Coach Hoffman not with us this evening. Uh, associate head coach Spencer Wright now with us. Coach, you've been with uh, Coach Hoffman longer than anyone that we all know. What has it been like and how many years have you and Coach been together now? Ooh, count five years at University of Texas Pan American, one year in the D-League. This is our seventh year here, looking at 13 years, but I haven't been with him the longest. Yeah. Kelly Hoffman's been with him the longest. We need to get her on next week and get her side of the story, I guess. I would think so. All right, uh, Coach, uh, having worked with Coach Hoffman uh, those years, uh, is there still a side of Bob Hoffman that comes out occasionally, either in a game or practice, that you say, gee, I haven't seen that before? No, not at all. You've got him figured out, huh? I've seen it all. <laughs> After 13 years, I've seen it all. I know when I, when I first started working with him, there was a side that I hadn't seen. Yeah. And then when I seen it, it was like, whoa, okay. <laughs> I hadn't seen that before, but okay. uh, I've seen it all. All right, uh, Coach Wright, uh, make an occupational medicine. Look at the Southern Conference, Coach. Uh, we're going to talk specifically about Chattanooga and Sanford in a moment. But as we look at the standings, Walford 12-2, and two, Chattanooga 11-3, and three, Mercer 10-4, and four, ETSU 8-7. and seven. Uh, Walford was picked preseason to win the regular season championship. Chattanooga, we know, is very good. Anything that you've seen unfold in the Southern Conference that maybe has surprised you, a team playing maybe better than they thought they would, or anything about the standings that get your attention? UNC Greensboro. Okay. I thought they would be playing a lot better. I thought they would have a better overall record. Not that they're a bad team. Yeah. They have, they have a lot of talent on that team, but I thought they would be a lot better than, than what they've shown. Yeah. What about uh, Sanford coach being 0-8 and, and then winning five in a row? Yeah, they're a good team. They're a talented team as well. Um, they're young, though. Yeah. That's the thing. So those things are going to be, those wins and losses are going to be up and down for those guys trying to figure it out. And coming into our game, they hadn't won a conference game. Yeah. And then after we beat them, they go and win six straight. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. All right, let's talk about uh, Chattanooga coming up on a Thursday, Coach. A big road win for uh, the Bears. Uh, we uh, managed to get the win in overtime here. Do you see any change of what Chattanooga might try to do against uh, the Bears on Thursday at home? If I was Chattanooga, I would just drive the basketball. Yeah. I would just drive it every single time. I th um, that's... That's what they started to do toward the end of the first half and the whole second half is just drive the basketball. They've got so many talented players. Well, Toyo may be one of the best uh, post players in the league. Yeah, I wish we had him. <laughs> I wish we had him. Um, nah, they're, they're a very, very talented team. Yeah. Um, from top to bottom, they might be the most talented team in the conference. And if you think about Southern Conference championships, usually you think about them uh, and the success they've had getting to the championship game. Yeah, over the past couple of years, uh, when you think about last year, uh, Coach Wade has done a good job turning that program around and winning some games. Uh, but prior to that, they struggled a little bit. Uh, before, uh, before Coach, the prior coach was there, they had won a lot and they yeah. were really good yeah. for a long time in the Southern Conference. So, you know, now that he's got that program going in the right direction, I expect them to be good every single yep. year. 
one of the last two road games, and then we travel on over to Birmingham. We just talked about Sanford a moment ago. It's senior day at Sanford. They're having a red out day. So, uh, and Sanford's just playing with the style of basketball they play. It's a challenge to get ready for. They play a lot like VMI. They play a lot like VMI where they're going to try to press, 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 try yeah. to turn you over, get the ball up and down the court, try to run you out the gym and, and wear your guys out. That's going to be a tough game. That's going to be a very tough game. And especially, uh, Coach, as we said, the last two on the road, then we return for two at home. But at this point in the season, there's not really any secrets out there among any teams or coaches. You've seen the players. You've seen their style of play. What, what's the key this time of the year of getting the wins on the road? Consistence, being, being who you are, doing what you do, doing what you know you can, what you're capable of doing, and continuing to do that. And once you start stepping outside those boundaries and yeah. doing things you're not capable of doing and yeah. going away from what you're supposed to do, you're in trouble on the road. All right, we've got those two big road wins coming up. Before we let you go, Coach, and wrap it up this evening, uh, as I asked Coach E earlier, what about coaching do you enjoy most? I would have to say the camaraderie with the players. That's a, that's a special thing just because over the past years, we've had kids that have always done the right thing. Mm -hmm. And every program in America can't say that. If you just look at the past couple of weeks, some of the bigger schools, some even the smaller schools, had to remove kids from their teams because of off the court issues. And I'm, I'm happy to say we haven't had that in our seven years of being here, which, is, which makes coaching that much easier. It just makes it that much easier knowing that you can go to bed at night and turn off your phone and yeah. not have to wake up to a a voicemail from somebody and say, hey, come get your guy. And it also means, Coach, the last two minutes of a game when the game's on the line, if you can depend on them to do all the other things of life, you can depend on them in a game when, when it's to be decided the last seconds. Exactly, exactly. All right, Coach Spencer Wright joining us this evening. Two huge road games on for the Bears and then finish at home next week. We'll be back for the final show of the year next week as we set the stage to end the regular season. Remember the uh, SOCON tournament coming up in Asheville? March 5th through 9th. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Hopefully we'll have head coach Hoppin back with us next week. We'll get some safe travels and some good weather to get him back with us. Uh, hopefully he's going to be in Chattanooga with us on Thursday night. We'll be back next week with more Inside Mercer Basketball. Yeah.